Hey, this is tape 26, and these are some pictures I just received of uh, Paul Walker's unbelievably cool B-17, and needless to say, I'm a big fan of having big, heavy, overweight, oversized airplanes, and I congratulate Paul on uh, pulling this off. This really looks like a great ship. He uh, says he intends to fly it at the Nats. He intends to trim it out and uh, stick it in the nose of all the other flyers in the world. Anyway. B-17 or not, it's uh, it's probably almost as big as my sweeper. Uh, in fact, my sweeper out in the garage is looking to uh, come and step on this B-17 or something. Anyway, cool effort. I really think it's a cool plane. And needless to say, you see it here uh, months before you ever see it in the magazines. That's the cool part about Pro Stunt videos. Now I don't have a lot of details, Alan Ressinger is the one that sent these photos in, but uh, the details, Don McClave had sent me a letter that said this, uh, this ship really did fly well, and uh, Alan Ressinger said the same thing, it really looks like it's trimming out to be a, uh, a really good stunt ship. And I really hope he uh, can push this to the limit. Obviously uh, it's, it's in the 90 ounce range from the note, and uh, I'm hoping he gets it going man. Hey, maybe we can bring back some of these big planes and we won't have these uh, these people that judge constantly belly aching that the plane looks too big or too this or too that or whatever. This looks like a really neat plane. And again, like all of Paul's stuff, by the way, for anybody interested, uh, this has a Pro Stunt Products uh, <laughs> flap horn in it. <laughs> and I remember making a flap horn with a 10 inch throw and I was wondering what Paul was going to do, pick his teeth or something with it. But anyway, of course, Paul's stuff all comes apart, which is uh, handy for transportation purposes and whatnot. And uh, I think he's one of the prime innovators of getting that system to work. In the past, all the systems we've had for take-apart planes have been less than desirable. This is certainly, uh, you know, a usable, good system, and anybody out there Obviously, I would suggest you read the impact article and uh, get a set of the plans and maybe pick up some good ideas you can incorporate into your own planes. And of course, this is, this is one of the things now, uh, having spoken to Paul about this a little bit about six months ago when I made the horns, uh, and I, I really have to say this is an important part of the hobby as far as I'm concerned is when you can go out and build a plane, the plane that you want to build, not the plane that because of some uh, peer pressure you have to build or whatever. This is a plane you can build just because you want to build it. And Paul had said to me that one of his lifelong goals was to build a stunting B-17 and he obviously has built it. Uh, and I think this is scale enough. You could even r run this in the scale event. It would be that good. I uh, have to see George Gatiss about that. Anyway, it's nice to know that we have the pictures first and that we have them in color and we have the commentary and we have the inside story and it's not like you're getting it from somebody uh, from another planet. This is first-hand information here. And we're going to go on. We have some other pictures that just came in in the mail this week and uh, we're going to discuss what happened the week before on our, our contest out in Flushing and uh, try to put the pieces of this puzzle together. The Nationals is coming up. Edison is coming up and we want to try to get our stuff working a little bit better than it's been. It's still in a state of crude tune. These are a couple of pictures Alan Ressinger sent in. They don't have a caption but certainly looks like uh, a very nicely made Thunderbird copy of Bob Palmer's paint job with the checkerboard rudder and whatnot. Again, I don't have a caption. These pictures are from Alan Ressinger. I don't have a caption here, but uh, this looks like another twin. Certainly one of the uh, the West Coast. This looks like a Brian. This might be Alan Ressinger's copy of the Brian Ether plane that he made. Walker's plane and a twin, and obviously that's Ted's plane there. The Gray Ghost is back in action. Anyway, uh, thanks to Alan Ressinger for that set of pictures, and we'll go on to the next envelope. Now this is a picture that came in from Joe Adamusco, and if you notice, the, he talked about in the stunt form video his construction method, and, and obviously you could write him a letter if you want the, the write-up on this. Uh, this is his 
I guess elliptical, uh, the way he's been building the elliptical wings, and here's one of the completed planes. He says this is a plane he built in 87, kind of a Novi kind of plane. Calls it the Sidewinder. Kind of a neat paint job there, too. Uh, if you look real close, you'll see it's the, the, the shape of a stunt ship going in both directions. Kind of a cool paint job, side-mounted engine, similar to uh, the Sidewinder that I have all the videos on. From Joe Adamusco, just just a really neat. By the way, Joe put in a a real good expert flight. His first flight. Uh, I think we have it on the tape before this um, at the Flushing meet. That was his first expert contest, and he got fourth. Good showing, Joe. Now here's some pictures that came in from Richard Neal. Richard Neal is the one that contributed the uh, vintage stunt video footage. Uh, I really thank him for that again. This is an Ares that he built and he kind of did some modifications to it. Put the gear in the body, whatnot. Said he re-engineered the nose section a la Big Jim construction technology and it works great. He gets a great motor run with that. Another picture of the front of uh, Richard's Ares. Again, probably does a lot of flying off grass or rough fields. The, the fuse mounted gear is more appropriate than the wing mounted gear. And in this case it's good. It gives you a little prop clearance too if you have to take off on uh, on grass or whatever. Just one more picture of Richard's Aries. Again, again, cool innovations. Updating an old design, changing the nose construction to a more reliable uh, bulletproof system, getting the gear in a body. And Ares Aerodynamics, obviously one of the best, come up with a really nice package, a bulletproof package. And we're going to close this out. The last picture, this old picture of Eddie Elastic here with the Impala at the sick. Uh, this is from the 64 Snowboard Meet. Nice young guy. Nice haircut, Eddie, by the way. Nice. Nice paint job, too. Anyway, uh, just brings back a lot of memories here. We uh, we did get to meet Mo Quintana at the Flushing Meet and a couple of weeks before. And it looks like he's seriously interested in making a comeback. And with a lot of the other old timers in this area back and active, uh, Vic Macaluso back on the bandwagon, Bob Lampione, John DeTavio, it's uh, almost like the good old days. Here's one of the guys we'd like to find and bring back to the event if we could ever find where he lives or if he lives at all. Dawn Cosmillo is reportedly uh, still living in New York City, so anyway, nostalgia aside, we're going to go down to shop and uh, get busy on our preparation for next week's contest. Now one of the things I want to spend a few minutes talking about is how to evaluate our videos. Now, here's one of the things that I've been able to do over the, the last couple of years, I guess, is I've been able to videotape an awful lot of my flying and the flying of John DeTavio and Jeff and whoever was around, Jose Modesto and whatever. And what I do is I like to come home with the video now. In this case, here's what we've done. We have the new plane, here's a new plane. And we've flown it uh, maybe four flying sessions And now we have a contest. We have the flushing contest on video. Okay, so we have three separate stages here. And what happens, and believe it or not, this, this, this may or may not have slipped by you. When you have a new plane, it's impossible to evaluate a new plane. You come home and you fly a few flights and you say, wow, this is the greatest plane I've ever flown. Whoopie doo, whoopie doo, it's like a new girlfriend. Let's just, just put girlfriend. When you have a new girlfriend, wow, everything's exciting. You know, nothing is boring, nothing is repetitive. Okay, you fly a few trim sessions, and in this, we, we had, I think, four good trim sessions, and you make some trim adjustments, and you get to know it, and this is like the dating phase or whatever. But now you're married. When you go to a contest, you put the plane to the limits, and you find out its weaknesses. And obviously, this is what we've just come home from flushing. We have the contest on video. And now we can evaluate. And from having looked at the videos over and over and over again, 
I've come up with what I want to do as far as retrimming the plane for the next contest. Now what had happened is in the four flying sessions that we had, the air was relatively cool and we were using up last year's fuel and we hadn't really super dialed in the wing yet and we were going back and forth with different propellers. We really haven't settled on anything. This for all purposes is still a new plane. But when we took it to the contest and push it to its limit, now we find out the weakness. The weakness becomes apparent. And in this case, the weakness was the prop. Okay? What I had started off with was a 12 the props under conditions that day. I would have had a little bit of better way of evaluating it. I didn't have the time, and it's really not that important right now. We're really we're in the baby stage of getting this plane trimmed out. But before we go out for the next session, I will have these four props available, and the next step will be to get the right prop on a plane. And let me just briefly show how I evaluate what prop should go on a plane. Okay, remember we have the, in this same prop diameter and pitch, we have four choices here. And this would be the weakest, this would be the strongest, and this would be in between. So the four choices are, now, when I look at the video, and this is, this is the reason I, I don't think I've covered this many times on video. I look at the video, and if the loops tend to be like this, which they were, okay, if that's what the round loops look like, that they're longer than they are high, okay, it's generally telling you the prop that's on there is too weak. Because what happens here, you start to climb and it just slides out. When the prop is too strong, your loops tend to look like this. As soon as you point the nose up, it wants to go right up. Now, if you have a lot of flights on video, which we do, we can go back and if every loop in 10 flights looks like this, I know that I've got to abandon that prop altogether and go to the next, the next stronger pulling prop. If my loops all tend to be like this, or if my eights tend to look like this, then I know I have too much prop on her and I want to bleed off a little a little bit of the power here, back down and go back down one notch. But this is a really important concept here. From looking at the video, I can see the weaknesses. Now, another weakness that always shows up is in triangles, if this leg tends to be too straight, in other words, if here's a perfect triangle, let's just, and you look at your videos and all your triangles are starting to look like this, it usually is telling me that the prop is too weak. And I'd go to a more, a more powerful or a more geared pulling prop and in the case I just showed. Now, it doesn't mean you can't go from 12, if you, if you have a selection of props, to 12 and an eighth. 12 and a half, 12 and a quarter, 12 any. You can go bigger in diameter, but in this case we're limited because we only have one selection of props and they're all about the right size for the 46. So if the, if the triangle tends to be like this, then what happens, usually you want to back down on the prop. See now, if you have the video and you can see these things happening over and over and over, if, you're, if your eights, for instance, is starting to look like this, everything's getting drawn out this way, it's too weak. And if, you're, if your maneuvers, and, and this is not even a flying characteristic. Another thing too, on your on your vertical eight, if your vertical eight tends to be like this, gigantic on top and small on the bottom, it's too weak. Now I looked at the video and I was doing exactly the opposite thing. I was trying to compensate for the fact that the motor wasn't exactly running where I wanted, it was on the rich side, and I was trying to do this. I was trying to make snowmen. And if you look at the video, obviously I didn't win the contest. Uh, this this is costly as far as points go, but part of what's happening here is the prop was wrong. The prop needs to be stronger to do more pulling. You want to get you want to get the top. Here's the three things. I'd say three things to evaluate. This part of the vertical eight, this top part of the vertical eight, the hourglass, the top part and the top leg. This part of the hourglass up here. Let's just finish it out. And a whole overhead eight. If any of these three things are tend to be weak, the first thing you want to do is add some tip weight. Number one, get the right amount of tip weight in it until that tip starts banging and dropping. But then the next thing is the prop. Either more diameter, more pitch, both, all of the above. 
but you need more you need more thrust to generate you through these top parts or as a final solution if you have if you have used up all your options then what you want to do is cut two feet off the lines now I know this sounds you know like too scientific and too complex and stuff but believe me it's taken me years and years and years to figure out how I can use these videos to improve my stunt pattern and here's a significant thing too you can get off the video lap times yeah when you're at a contest you can do this in practice all day long when you get to a contest you want to see are you flying 48 are you flying 50 53 52 what speed do you want to fly what were the conditions that day you know in good air I would prefer to fly if I could if all things were possible 53 if the air gets questionable coming and going getting a little worse maybe 52 51 okay bad air 50 and anything where, where we get now is it flyable then we get into the 49, 48, or in, in Mike Rogers' case, even further down in the, in the lake. Faster and faster and faster. The better the air is, the slower you can fly. If, uh, if I remember right, I clocked Paul's plane on the Walker flyoff. He was flying 5455. Five, five. The air was absolutely flawless, and he took full advantage of it with a nice, rich setting. Good air. Had the air been bad, I'm sure he would have gone just a little bit faster. Who knows how much? Each plane, of course, and each skill level is different. But as air gets worse, flying faster is always one of the choices you have to get through. So here we are in the shop, and we've evaluated the videos, kind of thought about it, and these are the things we're going to change before the next session. The prop, for sure, we're going to change the prop. We're going to add about a quarter ounce of tip weight for sure before we even go out and fly the plane. We're going to do these two trim changes based on what we've seen on the video. The other thing we're going to try to do, and I don't know if I'll have time because it's going to be an awful long day working at the house today, we're going to try to pull a double shift on both houses. Uh, I want to make up, I've been flying on 70 foot lines, I want to make a set of 68 foot and a set of 66 foot lines. These short lines will be as a last resort if we do decide to fly the plane at Edison or the 68s if the air is good at Edison or this would be your lines for open runway air. And the three choices are, you know, the worse the air gets, the shorter the lines get. The better the air gets, the longer the lines get. Uh, having these three changes I would expect the plane would be a little more competitive, fly a little more consistently, but again, then what I want to do with these changes in mind, if I do get to go out on Saturday or whatever, what I will get to do is videotape. Come home and watch the video over and over and decide, have I, have I made improvements? Go back and play the flushing video, go back and play this video. Have I made improvements? And am I going in the right direction? Because a lot of this stuff is just by the seat of the pants. A lot of it doesn't have a uh, a real formula for it. But if you have a rough idea of how you can take a new plane and, and, ev and constantly, constantly, and I'm sure all the top flyers do this, they start with a new plane, then trim it, rough trim, then fly a hundred gallons of fuel and then get finer trim, finer trim, finer, 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 till it's really right on the razor edge. And then when it's on the razor edge, now you can go practice. For all purposes, this year we have not flown a practice flight yet. We have not flown a flight where we were just practicing a stunt pattern. We have been always trying to evaluate trim changes, things like that. And uh, It's a new plane. It's got a long way to go, and uh, we're certainly going to try. We're going to try to take the week before the Nationals off, if we can, from the housework. And we're going to try to get out maybe one night this week. There's no guarantee if we do get some good air and we'll try to keep track of so you can kind of watch back the idea being you can kind of watch back through the videos and see well gee at flushing it flew like this and then the next week it flew like that we did these changes and next week it flew like this you can kind of see what goes into the final preparation for getting a plane ready to go to the nationals and and if you see this an awful lot of this technology you can apply to your own program some of it you can some of it you can't uh, but just knowing that it exists is going to help you in some way evaluate your own plane 
and even if you don't use it now if you fly in profiles now somewhere down the road you can use this knowledge to good advantage and you're not going to find this knowledge in magazines and in trim articles because they're so limited you, you, you get a thousand words and you're finished well how could you describe this in a thousand words it's it's impossible uh, and even if you did, people trim planes in different ways. Some people's trim methods don't work. If you're, just as an example, if you're a believer in the lighter is better, if that philosophy, the thin wing thing, and we've already gone through that, well, that trim technology is not really going to be appropriate to a plane like a walker plane or a pattern master with the thick wing where you can carry some weight. So the whole philosophy changes. The whole way of trimming a plane changes. If you have a plane with the bigger inboard wing and I have a plane with equal panels, well, yeah, some of the trim is appropriate, but not all of it. You have to determine, are you in the thin wing or the thick wing, the bigger inboard wing, equal panels. How, do, how does your plane uh, stack up relative to the kind of trim you're trying to put on it? Now, this, this plane that we're doing right now is an equal panel. So it tends to carry a good amount of tip weight, good line tension, and and it's six right now it's 65 ounces. It's certainly not a lightweight for 700 square inches with big flaps, so it's got a lot of lift. Uh, and and we're basically trimming this the way you would trim a Pattern Master, uh, an Impact, uh, Derringer had a had a thick wing. These planes all tend to trim the same. They're basically working off the same philosophy. When you're trimming thin, thin wing planes, now you trim where you spend an awful lot of the time just trying to make the plane lighter and lighter and lighter to get the performance. I prefer this way if, if you know, this is just my opinion again, and I think the average person has a lot more luck dealing with this kind of a setup than, than constantly telling them just go home and make the plane two ounces lighter when it's already as light as you possibly can make it. So anyway, that's some food for thought. Uh, Edison is coming up this week. Again, uh, I'll just mention this on the video. My daughter is getting married Saturday. I'm going to have to drive eight hours up to her wedding and eight hours back. And so I may be uh, sleeping on <laughs> at the handle at Edison. But we do want to get another flying day in. We haven't had any practice. And uh, again, I want to congratulate Billy Suarez on a really good uh, set of flights at Flushing. A good win, solid win. He's really got his 60 stuff working well. And uh, I really look forward to seeing Billy maybe even getting in the top five this year. And maybe he'll bump me out, so maybe I shouldn't wish him so much luck. And maybe I won't make it. Hey, maybe I'll be asleep at the handle. Anyway, uh, that's it for today. We're going to go work on houses and uh, hope to see you either later on in the week or at Edison. Now, just like what I just said, right on a screen here, this is my second flight at Flushing, and I've watched it about a hundred times, and I'm sitting here with a little notepad making notes, lap times. For instance, one of the things I can see off of this flight, I can see that the, uh, the wing is up very slightly in inverted flight. I see how the loops are stretching out longer than they should. That's one thing I can evaluate right off the video. I can evaluate the motor run. Evaluating the motor run is a big thing. Usually I can get the, the, the judges' voices too and pick up comments on what they're saying about the plane. Now here's the squares. That looks about right. Low bottom there. This certainly wasn't a Nats winning flight. Certainly one we, uh, we want to learn from rather than keeping a bank. What I do like about the plane and what I can see from this, I like the way it corners. It seems to hold the corner real good, the squares. I like the look as it comes around. And these are things you couldn't see if you didn't have the video. You wouldn't be able to see it. Now see, that was too straight up. Too straight up. This is the second flight on the end of uh, tape 25. Now let's see if this kind of stretches out. This is kind of dragging that, dragging out, dragging out a little bit. Missed intersection. That one was terrible. That intersection went way over that way. Now another thing that's always helpful too is at the end of a contest, if you go over to the judge and say, 
give me a few helpful pointers for next week. Obviously, don't do it in the middle of a contest. This looks pretty bad, Misty Interception. This looks decent. Another thing I'm doing on outsides, I'm not dragging the outsides over far enough. That's an old habit I used to used to be in years ago. I guess I'm back in it. Now watch, the vertical eight will be too small on the top. Look how big the bottom is. And now the top is real just small. That's a snowman. The bottom is much bigger than the top. Looks like a little low on a pullout too. The plane really does hold bottoms real well. I, that's one characteristic this design has. Bad pullout on the hourglass. And this is where you really find out if the, if the ship is weak or not. If it's too weak up here, when we get up here, you'll see it start to free, free flight. Here's where you could use a little more prop, right there, on the outside part of it. Right there, as it goes dead into the wind. And of course the four-leaf clover. Now this is just some of the things, some of the things you can get off the video. You can pull off little things. If you watch, if you watch yourself fly over and over and over, you can pick up some of these little mistakes. And, and it definitely will help you. It definitely will be an asset. So if you get nothing else off of this video, you can uh, look at me watching this video over and over and over and over in my shop trying to pick up things I can put into the program for next week. Now we took off the job a little early today. Big Jim's motor, which is going to be our spare 46, came in the mail today. Very low compression, very smooth, and we wanted to get a day of flying on it, evaluate it, and report back to him. So we finished up the job at 5 o'clock and ran out to the circle burner field, get a couple of flights on it anyway. John's going to do some test flying. We also brought the Harley, and we're going to give the motor a uh, Hopefully a few flights in both planes, and the object of doing this, obviously, is uh, one plane is a little over 70, one plane is about 65. We can evaluate, and these motors go in and out so fast, it's ridiculous. We never take the header off. Within one flight, we can change the motor, prop, spinner, the whole thing goes in and goes out. So anyway, we want to evaluate this today, and maybe we'll get some video of some of the flying too, who knows. Then go back to the house and... Uh, Brian Etha has assured me this week or the latest middle of next week we'll have props, new props to try, his 12 and a half, four and a half, really looking forward to trying one of those. So all we'll do, we'll get some motor testing in here and then uh, we'll get back to you. to start doing some testing here. Air looks decent, certainly not great. Decent anyway. Good day to do some testing like this. And again, this is a very low output. Hopefully going to have a good stunt run motor here, I hope. Unfortunately, the air went dead, and I mean dead right now. It's so so unpredictable that you uh, it's really unsafe to do consecutive maneuvers here. So we're going to pack this session in. What we did find out, the motor seems to run nice. Seems like it has more than enough power, but we're going to have to make a trek out to Flushing if we can. Only this week we're not going to be able to. Hey, Saturday my daughter gets married. Whoopee! And then Sunday we'll be going right to Edison. So. Uh, with that in mind, no point belaboring the thing. 
we'll see what we can do as far as getting you some footage from the Edison meet and how the old tweener worked out that day. Now just to reinforce what I've already uh, said, I guess I've said this on the video before, but by the end of the flying session I wound up with a trim tab on the top of the outboard wing. Now I'll leave that on there until I actually do get to tweak the flaps. Again I'm going back and forth, back and forth. It's difficult to do this at the field because you have to untape the hinge line and everything. And I do prefer having a tab as the final uh, final adjustment. So what I'm going to do is put the flaps back to dead neutral, both of them neutral, and make sure that neutral and neutral at the tail are exactly the same. I also made myself a list of, we did try several different props on this guy, and I made a little note and put it right inside the spinner as to what the trim changes I want to make before I fly the plane the next time. But what we're going to do now is we're going to get the plane ready for Edison. We're going to take uh, the tweener, put the grass gear on, and take the prop that we used yesterday at the field and give it a, which were round up being the best of the four, and try it on a tweener and hopefully uh, get to Edison early, get some flights down there before uh, the crowd gets there, and hope they mow the grass. If they didn't mow the grass, I guess we'll just fly the green plane. Now what we did get to try yesterday in the dead air at the circle burner field at the end of the day, we did get to try the soft motor with the wide blade prop, the Brian Ether wide two blade, the 12 four and a quarter wide. And it was a, a little bit better pulling prop in the dead air. Uh, and so what we're gonna try is, the first thing we wanna do is set up the tweener. We haven't flown that prop on a tweener yet. We'll get a couple flights on a tweener with the, uh, the 12 and a quarter wide blade. Now these are the heads that we had uh, to experiment with yesterday. This is a Hemi head, 160 pounds. We got to run the green plane with the Hemi head a few times with the wide blade prop and we went back and forth and made notes of all the uh, things that got better, got worse. One thing with the Hemi head, the mileage goes way up. You get a little bit better fuel economy. So if you're, uh, one of the things to keep in mind, if say you have a plane that uh, uses the full six ounces of gas and you don't get any extra laps out of the pattern, a head gasket might help and hemming out the head a little bit will help. Now we've gone from about 200 pounds of compression down to 160 and the plane runs almost an extra minute with that setup. So that's one of the things to keep in mind. Also to run, the run characteristics get a little bit better when you hemi out the head. You get a, a more of a fox-like motor brake rather than a one-speed uh, screaming Mimi electric motor. So this is Big Jim's technology and if you have any questions or you want to know more or just talk to him, 1-718-529-4631. And uh, what happened at Flushing, we had the 170-pound uh, head on a plane. And what we're going to do at Edison is we're going to try to decompress head with a little less compression now and uh, just see exactly what we can get as far as getting a little bit better motor brake and a little bit more pull out of the wide blade prop. I'm looking for a little bit better motor run at the same time, a little bit better economy and soften up the power a little bit so it's not such a radical break. Now obviously because we're going to Edison where the grass is usually pretty rough we put the biggest set of wheels on here. These are two and a quarters and we put the grass gear on with the rake as far forward as we can reasonably expect to have it. Uh, and this is the point I want to make, and this is a point that a lot of uh, intermediate, advanced flyers don't even realize exists. The plane gets set up differently for different contests. When we fly flushing, for instance, we generally wind up with a completely different setup than in a circle burner field. We don't run the same setup. When we go to uh, Edison, for instance, the setup for Edison is usually the short lines, extra tip weight, the biggest, highest pull and prop, the most powerful engine, and grass gear. That's usually the setup that'll win at Edison. And what happens is, if you have one setup and you have it for the Nats and for all the local contests and, and whatnot, whatnot, well, you really don't wind up getting the maximum performance out of things. Now, in this case, we, uh, 
like I said before, my daughter's wedding is tomorrow. We're not going to practice. We're going to try to get down to Edison early and get a test flight on this. We haven't flown it with the grass gear in a while, and it may require a little change to the trim tab. Uh, again, I don't have enough flights on the plane to really have this kind of information in the bank. After I have a year of flying on a plane, I'll know all this by heart. I'll know just how much tip weight to put in and take out and what lines to use and whatnot. But a completely different setup for varying conditions. And it's the only way I've found that you can have, you know, the maximum performance under a lot of different conditions. And one of the things, you know, in preparing for the Nats is you want to try to fly in as many different kind of conditions. And I'm sure all the expert flyers do this. You want to fly in some dead air where you have to back up. You want to fly in some high wind. You want to fly in, uh, like we did yesterday, in some dead air. Uh, varying conditions and find all the weaknesses of the plane. Now what we found in flushing was we were a little weak on the prop and a little weak on the motor and a combination of that and a rich run gave us a very uh, you know weak flight I guess is the right word. Now we could have gone in on a needle but then we would have lost most of the motor run so rather than go in on a needle I basically gone to the wide blade prop here and we'll try this at Edison and we'll try our luck and I've gone to the grass gear which usually changes the vertical CG a very little bit and when I do have more time on a plane I'll get where I'll get fr uh, comfortable where I can change the tab and the gear at the same time and not lose me much of the flight characteristics that I expect but anyway just to know that that exists and to know that different props work in different conditions usually a real a wide blade high pitch prop will work like at the circle burner field or Edison where the air is dead or swirly or unpredictable and in Nats air when you go out to runway air where the air is clean and blown in one direction you usually wind up with less diameter less pitch and a little bit uh, wimpier motor setup and that usually works the best at controlling the whip up when you're at the circle burner field or Edison there's no such thing as whip up you just flying and, and hoping that the wind doesn't pancake you in when you're flying at the Nats on runway air you, one of the things that are factors or whatever you deal with is the whip up and so you try to gear the prop to control the whip up really we really don't care about whip up for the next two weekends will be Edison and the circle burner meet whip up is not a factor so we've gone to the the uh, the wide blade more pitch in the prop prop the more powerful motor setup and like I said before the grass this all now this plane would require, I mean, in, in, to be legitimate, a day of flying to final tune it in and get that tab final tuned in. And we will not get to do that, but we will fly, you know, and obviously Billy and Mike and everybody's coming down to Edison. So uh, we'll do the best we can under uh, the limited conditions that we have. And what we're really working ourselves toward right now is getting as much time on a plane as we can, as much information in the bank so we'll be ready for the Nationals. Now one of the little handy things I uh, that I use, and I guess I haven't shown this, maybe I have shown on a video, I don't know, but they wore out after two or three years. I had made these out of quarter inch light ply, and I call them chocks, and then I take a piece of sticky back sandpaper to the bottom. If you use a van or, or any kind of thing where you lay the plane on its wheels, see the sandpapers here, uh, this allows you to position, you know, like right now I have three planes in the van, the wheels go in here, it keeps the plane from rolling back and forth. I cut them out for the largest size wheel possible and I just use them under the planes as chocks when loading a van it's a real handy thing to do uh, when you have to use like every day we use two or three different planes and we move them around in a van so this allows us just to position them in place where we want them and obviously I cut these a little oversized so the larger wheels fit in there wheel pants or whatever uh, I got the two and a quarter inch wheels put on a green guy so that uh, we don't tear the gear out of the plane at Edison and uh, we really never know about the grass situation. It's always an adventure. But it's certainly not a place to be flying real nice low wheel pants. Anyway, that about finishes it up. We're going to do some work on the props here. Uh, recheck our little inventory on props and uh, load up the van and try to get out of here. Now one final thing I did today is I checked my bit, my inventory of wheels that I take with me and I have a, a starting at this end inch and three quarter that are lightened and thinned, normal inch and three quarter, normal two inch, two and a quarter and two and a half. Now what this allows me to do, use it if I need a little extra prop clearance while I'm testing these Brian Ether props out, I can go to a little bit bigger wheel. If 
I need to change the vertical CG and I don't want to touch the trim tab, I can do this too. By the way, I also have the split apart wheel pants. I could change the wheels inside the wheel pant if I need a little more prop clearance or whatever. So what I'm <coughs> what I'm trying to give give you is the idea that you can use wheels as a variable thing and landing. Well, my daughter finally got married today. Congratulations. Glad uh, everything went well. Got married in a pouring rain, had the wedding in a tent. Uh, it's just unbelievable. Anyway, want to give you a little sneak preview of uh, this is the new Pro Stun Products Workshop. And uh, on upcoming videos, obviously, we're going to show the uh, progress as we turn this into an airplane workshop. We have about uh, oh, four to five times the amount of space we had. This is all, we'll take some pictures of this house. This, we're actually living in this house now. We've sold the condo, we're in the new house. And this is going to be, uh, we hope, a very nice, big, clean workshop. We have a bar at one end. We have about uh, a 30 by 30 workspace here. Of course, it's all full of, we haven't even unpacked from the move yet. This is why I haven't been answering the phone lately. We've been busy down here, not at the other house where the airplanes are. There's no airplanes at all at this house. And just give you an idea, we're going to turn this into, uh, it's all paneled, has nice recessed lighting, uh, nice big laundry room and everything. Anyway, it's a really nice big room. It has a lot of little closets built in for whatever purpose we can use them. We have that little workshop in the back. We're going to try to turn that into a spray booth. We're going to try to have five to seven building tables, at least according to our original drawings. John Dottavio and I are going to try to work this out that we have five to seven building tables so five to seven people can be working on a project at any given time and we can have the spray booth in operation for uh, as many people as need to use it want to use it so we're looking forward to that and just, just a little sneak preview we're going to go down to Edison and see how the weather is it's, it's pouring rain out there now hope the weather in Edison is better Well, this, this is another nice feature to New Pro Stun Products Workshop. We actually have a real bathroom complete with magazine rack with various uh, magazines. And a toilet, a real toilet. No more running out behind the garage. We're really, gonna, we're really going first class. We have a mirror. We have pictures of the uh, top qualifiers at the Nets. Well, we're really rolling here, I'm telling you. Anyway, look at it now, ladies and gentlemen. A year from now, this is going to be... Uh, the top workshop in the pl on the planet, I hope, unless I run out of money or John DeTavio dies on me or all of the above. Anyway, the new Pro Stunt Products. This is really a very large five bedroom house, very large. I mean, I'd guess it's over 5,000 square feet. And we're going to be remodeling the whole thing, turn this whole, whole house into an aircraft, <laughs> and my wife doesn't know it yet, an aircraft shop. You want to Nah, I'm just shooting some video of the, uh, the progress we made on the house so far. Nothing really to show, but uh, you know, later on it'll be interesting. This the, the beautiful dollhouse, the Wendy and Karen dollhouse. Anyway, that's about it for today. This is Carlos Serra's Jr.'s new plane. Only has a few flights on it. We're here at Edison. We're going to try to wait till the end of the contest and get a couple of trim flights on it for him. Still virtually new, unbuffed. Really a beauty, though. It really looks nice. Called the Jaguar. He has a little Jaguar insignia up there.
This is Scott Richland's plane here with a, uh, an OS Max in it. He's up from Maryland, drove all the way up from Maryland for the meet. Mike Karavich here with his profile Showtime laser. If you remember, we we have the video of this flying at the Coxsackie meet last year, flying in a profile event. It was an adventure to fly in the wind. A lot of fun. Good fun plane. What am I talking about? Good plane, period. A lot of fun to fly this. We call it the flying van. Now, Mike, Mike flew here by Learjet. His company paid for the ticket, and I uh, babysat his plane. Kept it at my house for a couple of weeks, and he's going to permanently leave it here so he has a plane to fly in all the East Coast contests. Kind of a neat thing. He doesn't have to drive eight hours to get here. Kind of cool. You all set, John? Yep. What a guy. Yep. You want to take pictures? I'll get him. If he wants.
here's Mike Rogers. He's taking uh, two official flights, one right after another, because he has to leave for some personal business. So he's going to take his two flights and then leave, and we'll all get to fly in the bad air later today. about have a trickle of a breeze. Super Tiger 46. Oh, put a 60 in it with a tune playing. <laughs> That's a big Beautiful. Jim big Jim will love it. Jim. He'll smoke oh. it like a cigar. <laughs> you gonna fly that way? If it's calm enough, yeah, I'll fly it. Fly it even if it doesn't calm down, Ben. Jack, show, <laughs> show him what you got. It's like that salami sandwich. <laughs> hey, uh, any chance I could trade this thing in for? Yeah. Yeah, it looks nice and clean. How many years have you been wearing Ten it? Years. You ever hear of a laundromat? No. I you ever hear of soap? I don't want to get this paint. Detergent? Paint. I don't want to take the paint off. Oh, no. Is that an autographed one? Autographed, right. Yeah. You get $10 off if they're autographed. Yeah, right. Yeah, Oh, my God. No respect. No respect. Let's see. what These advanced killer flyers here. What do they got? Secret stuff. Better sneak up on them so they don't know I'm taking their picture. Uh-oh. Prowlers. Prowlers.
Peabody ship. Rich is busy building a cardinal right now. Move up. Step up to tune pipes. Tudor. Tudor Mooter. Hey! On his knees. Begging the stunt gods for forgiveness. What's happened over here, Rich? Come on. You got a good turn. Hey, good turnout today. Yeah, good turnout on. for a lousy day like today. Holy Max. What happened? You whack it? Yeah. Great throw. Uh, take that off of that. Let's break those up. truck, but that's it. If you need one, I'll go get it for you. We'll measure four inches. If you can fit four inches in there, they'll fit. Yeah, yeah, they're short. All right, if you need one, I run a truck. Joe Ortiz flying through the worst air of the day. Really going for the kite ride here. The air has really gone down the tubes here lately. Joe Ortiz, another person building a new Cardinal from the kit. Cardinal Kit Ortiz over here. Yeah. I see what it is already, you're giving points for participation. Right? It's encouraging participation, and it, I think it's a damn good idea. That's what I was saying is, if you give me a small a paragraph on the principle of this thing, I'll, I'll publish it. It's going to take more than a paragraph. Why? 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 In the background, you'll hear Tom Niebuhr and one of the AMA officials arguing. We're going to try to catch this by sneaking backwards. Right in the AMA, for Christ's sake. I hear him waving his arms, too. Now, in, the, in, the, in the good sportsmanship, Rich Peabody and Tom Niebuhr have just blown the AMA officials. Blown him out of the water. Look, they're kicking him out. Kick him out, Bill! No, he doesn't. That's all right. Now, this is Joe Besher, the AMA official, who was here as a guest, and all these guys attacked him. He's really mad. We're all going to join the SFA, Wendy. Hey, Rich, he's going away mad, I'll tell you that. He's going to join the SFA. 
everybody here. They they don't they don't handle control. Uh, Lindemann, is it all right if I mug an AMA official? Is, is that against LA's club field. policy? <laughs> I'm known I'm known for I'm known for my hair. You know. Guys, yeah. blowing in the wind. Yeah. The old the old. We've grouch, heard otherwise. The old grouch with the gray hair that goes all over. You're no fun my, to be with. That's, that's the problem. My, my wife doesn't say that though. What is he going home mad now? I, th I thought I heard him say he's going to get a hammer and hit Tom Niebuhr in the tongue. <laughs> oh, man, you had him going, man. I tell you, I'm going to go home and watch this video. <laughs> those, those are people re receiving commercial copies. I will edit out the obscenity because these guys were really on his case. <laughs> Tom Niebuhr, control line diplomat in the month. Come on, let's fly. You wasted all my good air here. Paul Walker's out practicing. We're we just practicing and we're here talking to AMA people.
We are going to get some flights. It looks like we are going to go on to the second round. See what's happening here in Stuntsville today. And then go back to the house and work on our workshop. And tomorrow, go back to carrying sheetrock over at the other house. Gee, there's just no end to it. No end to the amount of sheetrock going into that three-story house. Unbelievable. I think we're going to work on a bathroom tomorrow. Put the tub in. It's fun, believe me. Rebuild your house for fun and profit. Or just for fun. Look at the judges in the background roasting this poor guy. I'm videotaping them all, man. Poor baby. Don't worry, Mike. Copies of this flight are going all over the universe. People on Mars are going to see this flight. Look at him. He's flying good. Oh. you've never flown at this field, we have, everything's great under 45, but you'll notice the trees are about the height of 45 degrees, and the air comes over the trees, like bowling balls and spare tires falling off a van, and when you get up top, it really can be nasty, you get slapped around. So we're flying right by high tension wires here. A radar microwave antenna. If you have a pacemaker, guys go out in the middle of the circle. They, tra they transmit a song, uh, you know, and the guy's pacemaker goes off. Really nice. Quality flying site. Look at that radar tower back there. They play a Ray Charles song and Mike has a heart attack. Right of Buffalo Falls, West Virginia. Now it looks like we're getting ready for the second round of Expo here. Now we got a little cookout going in the back here. Looks good. People serving liquor to miners here. The dog went, dog went behind the guy's van before and he came out with a pile of hamburgers. I don't know what the deal is here. Uh-oh. Come on, Mike. Where's the plane? Hey, find the plane. The plane, the plane. Oh! Mike, we got that on video. Hey, Mike. For five bucks, I'll edit it out of the final copy. I'd move the gear back a little bit. Oh, the AMA official is back with an axe this time. No, I don't trust you. Oh, no, no, no. I found out he was coming. I said, Get over here. Get over here. Get over here. Who's your toe? Nice hair, huh? You like this hair? With a head like this, you never run out of Brillo at home. The white walls on a car always get clean. <laughs> hey, Joe Beshard of the AMA. This is Tom Niebuhr's chart of all the girls he's gone out with in his you whole bet. life. How you doing? And how he's made out with them. You how, bet. Many, how many competitions? Notice the zeros. Really, they're in year 14. Well, no. 
what this is to having an East Coast Championship here, and a winner gets to go to Joe Beshard's house and live How for free for a year. Cut it out, will you? <laughs> yeah, Joe. Hey, when you work for the AMA, take them big paychecks. And Joe's supporting the biscuits. <laughs> you I can't even write a paragraph, Tom. If he has flat tires today, I know what's going to happen. <laughs> to write a paragraph. See the respect I get? Look at this. No. Ah! Another guy. Ah! Oh, yeah, video king. You recording this nonsense too? <laughs> How many of these affairs? Hey Joe, make sure you put my name in there. The hell with these guys. Yeah, guys don't, right they don't. Uh, are just put Wendy said blah 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. Forget well, about Joe, it. You're on candy camera. Uh, Never mind. <laughs> I got my hair, you know. Watch it there, Mike. <laughs> People want to know: Do you touch up your hair? Do you bleach it, or is that natural? See, no, no, I'm no. getting to the point where you'd have to bleach it or cut no, no, it. I dye, I dye it white. I need well. a handicap. <laughs> Get handicapped. He wants to get. Way. He goes to get free coffee at McDonald's. <laughs> the handicap price. <laughs> they give you the coffee, but no cup. They just pour it in you. What was that? You get citizens' coffee at McDonald's. Think so? My wife goes on a diet. <laughs> we on a diet. No, no, no. It's black. I make it white because I can't stand it. Boy, I'd have to miss it. It'd be jealous. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> All right, second round of expert. Up, oh, John DeTavio's up first. All right, Sheetrock King, I'll be right there. Hey, Wendy. I hate working for a hey, Sheetrock King. Why don't you show we're not really enemies, we're just... Uh... <laughs> the wind has gotten so nasty, we had a plane explode in flight here. Just blew apart in flight. Here's the wing, the nose. Whose plane is it, John? Can't tell from here. We'll waddle down here later and see what happens. Look like it come apart in flight, huh, Carlos? I didn't know what. I don't know. But it sounded like, yeah. Well, the wind was really blowing in. The engine whoop. was was running when. Uh, the yeah, the engine was running when it came. Part of it went flying into the pits. We'll go over and see what happened later. We got to get John D ready for a second. This is Carlos Serra's father. If you want to look at some of the details on this. Now that's the Super Tiger 46 I gave you. The big gym. Big gym rework. Pro stunt muffler. How big is the Venturi on that? It's a 185. Oh, 185? Okay. Yeah, it's a 185. The Jaguar on the wheel pants. That's cute. I like the little Jaguars. Yeah. Cute. Well, it's a little cheek from Pro Stunt. Yeah, Pro Stunt. I know that guy's a beast, isn't he? Forget yeah, it. Yeah, he comes up with some stuff. And the spider webs on the bottom. I like that. The spider web trim. What is that from? Spider Man or something? I have no idea. Great a idea. Bad, it would be a bad dream. A little Jaguar. A bad dream. Yeah. yeah. I had a lot of those. Yeah, she looks good. Real good. All Tom Lay Letra sets. Actually, no Tom Lay Letra sets on this one. No times? No, just a little detail on the tail from Tom Lane. Nice pilot. That's a beauty. Doesn't look like we're gonna, whoa, gee. Was gonna be a beauty. Hold on to the planes, hold on to the planes. Was gonna be a beauty. I think we'll put the planes away for the contest yeah. is over anyway. Windy won the contest. So we'll put the planes away while we're ahead. Who was second, Mike? Mike was second, I was first. Put the planes away, too windy to fly. It's a uh, one for a dollar or a three for two. You getting this on camera, this kid shaking me down, Wendy? Yeah, yeah, this is one of the rip-offs of the Edison meet. If you don't buy 50-50 <laughs> tickets, they give you flat tires. Yeah, they do. Hey Rich, you know any place open that uh, I can get a tire today? <laughs> I'm in sad need of an automotive tire. For your van? For the van, yeah. You got a flat tire? No, but I have no spare. <laughs> Another sad note our van. We want to get it ready for Indiana. Sad enough. Front end is gone. <laughs> no spare tire. Got to be very careful on the way home. Mm. Anyway. It's been a crazy day. It's been fun. We had a good time. Hey, Ortiz, did you?
Did you win? Yeah. Hey! Hey! Give me some money. I'll fix it up so you win next week. <laughs> Give me a quarter. All right, I'll take it. Thank you. It's you worth it. it. You want this? Yeah. I, hey, what do you want? Second or third? I'll take first. You guys know I'm judging next week, take right? The See award. that? Give me. You want a beauty award? Another ten dollars. There you go. I'll give you. I'll give you the concourse for a hundred. There you go. I'll give you the uh, discover. Oh, the discover card, huh? Uh, you're taking a buy? Yes. Here. The okay. Banshee doesn't Me. like you. Well, you can pick up the airplane so in the you You're packed on at the end. And I don't, you know, don't have to wait around. Let's get the second round going here, baby. Peabody's gonna fly, I know that. He wouldn't dare back down. He just flew. I know. <laughs> I know it was great. I've never flown stuff like this before. This is very <laughs> yeah. Okay. How many did Suarez buy? <laughs> did Suarez buy five dollars worth? Not yet. <laughs> you cheap. <son. laughs> You're not gonna. You're not winning any more local contests, <laughs> Bill. I'm gonna judge the Nats. Take the How much are they? Uh, uh, one for a dollar and three for two. Should be able Giving Ertnowski the winning ticket here. Look at this. Ertnowski spends his whole paycheck. I'll have to jack the price Last of fuel up or something. Oh out of my batteries. god. Every time I win. touch the Visa card, the uh, <laughs> bell goes off in my wallet. <laughs> Make sure these get picked, kid. Oh, I'm going to teach you about political corruption. <laughs> Put mine right on. Leave that camera. <laughs> I'm going to teach you how to win the Nats. Put that right on top. Oh my god. Suarez, you have it now. This is the winning ticket, Suarez. Oh, that's Suarez. what you think. Suarez? I'm, I'm picking at a two different You don't have here. a chance, Suarez. I may win the ringmaster kit, too. I need that. <laughs> I just crashed my ringmaster. If I win it, I'll give it to Suarez. What do we got here? Midwest Warhawk. Oh my god, look at all this stuff. I totaled my ringmaster. It's like in five pieces. That's a good kit. Beep, 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 beep. Uh, I don't know. I gotta find Guys, out. Guys, are no fun to fly. Did you get your ticket already? Right next? How much Is that is how it? many people flew already? Recently released from prison, Dan White. <laughs> hey, how much can I get on this? Hey, I thought they were keeping you sex offenders in jail. <laughs> they let you out. Now. They let me out once a week. Overcrowding. Overcrowding. <laughs> You're in Florida. They he let eats, all the sex offenders out, too much, too. and they keep the kids that smoke pot in jail. I yeah. said, the truck drivers with beards, they're a prime candidate. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody follows me on the expressway. Though. This guy's name is Joe Schick. Oh, hold the planes! Get the planes! Oh, the tent just went over. Where's the tent? <laughs> there goes Banjock's car across the field. Yeah, he oh, who said it was windy today? A great day to be a tune pipe. <laughs> Here in Toon Pipeville, holy mackerel. I'm surprised the plane didn't blow over. Before my saber flipped over before. The tent went over before. Where's that plane that exploded? The guy put it in a garbage can? No, no. Where is it? Probably in the garbage I saw a plane going in. Where's the plane that exploded in the air? That was a while ago. I don't know like four or five times. The second time they left the doubles out. didn't know he was a child molester too, did Every no Child molester, yeah. They keep you in an extra 60 days for that. I'm everything, man. Especially I, if you're a school teacher. They let me out once a week, though. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, you know we got a queer in the Sickle Burners Club, and you know him. The ringmaster is on the ramp. Thank Forbes for preparing to file an official protest with God. Uh, Hank, I think they screwed you. <laughs> no. <laughs> I if got you win this, and how a many different batches. You cheap. No way you're gonna win. You, you know how many tickets did you buy? I bought ten dollars worth. Who's done? <laughs> how much money you got with? <laughs> you should still have. Down and shake them. Oh man! Your wife lets you have a ten dollar bill to come to these contests. 
His wife's not here today. That's why he's a big macho man. When Terry's here, he doesn't spend any money. This guy's never bought a lottery ticket. Absolutely not. That's he right. never goes in on a 50-50. Never spends a dime. <laughs> Look at this guy. Give We're him a shave. No, guys with beards never win, Beth. I got the tickets. I don't know. Guys with beards and yeah, tattoos you, never you guys, win. You guys got the tickets, but he put mine in the bucket. <laughs> I'll make you feel good. My my daughter got married yesterday, and the guy she married has more beard than this guy. <laughs> Forget it. He almost didn't have one. Is there alcoholic beverage in there? Take that can out. Alcoholic beverage. Oh, the AMA. Look at these nice fingernails, too. Holy yeah. man. Yeah, take that. Oh, Whoa! Pepsi. Pepsi, right? Hey, let's get this flight. Not much action going on here now, ladies and gentlemen, but we're going to get it. Anyway, this is what we want to say. We do have a serious moment here. One of the purposes of coming out to this contest and flying what we hope is going to be the Nats plane under some real adverse conditions is to see how our trip changes work. And basically today, the things we did, we added more than we can get through this way. We put on the biggest prop we had in the box. It was a 12 and a half, I believe. I'll have to go look, but it's with the big one on here. Ran the motor a little harder, used 10% nitro. And what's good is you can find a weakness in the plane. One of the things we did make up today, we did have time, we made up a set of a little bit shorter lines. So now we have a set of short lines and long lines for the upcoming troop session. So we hope we're gonna get. Now again, no guarantee we're going into sheetrock mode here. Sheetrock City. But anyway, it is beneficial to come out with a new plane, get some flights like this under these conditions, which are really ridiculous. It's nice that we did win the contest, the side benefit. You can see the flag just blowing up a storm. The tent flew over, the outhouse flew over, cars were blowing over, flyers are blowing over, one plane exploded in flight. But anyway, it'll go down in history in the wind column. Here goes my hat. Bye, nice little fun. Hang on to the tent. Here goes the stuff across the plane. Here goes the field. Here goes the kids. Oh my god. Look at this, there goes the guy's wife, there goes some sheets, look at this stuff going. Yeehaw! Anyway, there is a purpose to all this madness and we did accomplish our purpose. And the purpose is to find out just for how far the envelope on this new plane goes. We know the green plane will go through this, but uh, like all pattern masters, it's super, super excellent in the wind. We don't know about the tweener yet. So far it's only got one victory, one contest win in the wind. And we really did have a better than average day here. There's also some beauty awards they're going to give out. We'll see who won the beauty award. I think Haravich is going to play with his plane here. I don't know what they're doing over there. Somebody's babysitting his plane. We got some of the gay guys over there dancing around for gay rights. A lot of funny stuff going. Guys trying to give my van a flat tire here. When I got to the field early this morning, a funny thing, I got to the field real early this morning, there was a hundred rabbits out on the field. And I blew the horn and they went, they went into rabbit mode. Unbelievable. Anyway, looking forward to getting back to the house. Maybe we can clean up some on the shop tonight. Tomorrow we're going to start our bathrooms. But there really is a purpose to coming out here on these kind of days, even with a new plane. We could have flown the green plane, we could have punked out, wimped out, whatever, but we did get a fly. Let's see if we can get a landing here. They're going to have the trophy pull real soon. There's no way you are winning this. Suarez, now. how many tickets? I have Did you spend ten dollars? Absolutely. I'm not letting you win any more <laughs> local contests. That's it. Spend like there's no tomorrow, Suarez. You're the only guy here that has a steady got, job. You're the only guy here that has a job. A job, maybe. Who knows? You haven't carried a sheet of sheetrock in ten years. Who knows Monday? <laughs> nice landing. <laughs> Too 
bit it wasn't Mike's good play. <laughs> now we got tickets out of three different oh, batches, so God. there's no way you're going to win. No right fun. Now, you got it. everything. <laughs> Billy, if I win this 50-50, I'm not buying your lunch. You want to have lunch after this? Uh, yeah. the, the best. <laughs> Let's go have some pizza. I want to get together. That's I told my wife I won't have any pizza so we can cheat on her. Your wife's not here either. The heck with him. Karen, when you watch this video, you'll know I was faithful to my diet. <laughs> Said a pizza place right down in town is good. There's a diner down there. Now I was good enough to bring Mike Haravich's plane here in my van, but I just told him now, unless I get free lunch, he has to carry this home on the airliner or however he got here. Lear Jet or whatever he came in on. Anyway, we're going to have a great little get together up at the uh, diner now. And I guess that's the best part of all these meets. A little get together afterward and uh, harassing each other. Looking at Mike's rear end here is always a lot of fun. Richland came up for Virginia for a blowout contest. Ortiz won his first expert contest or advanced. What is Joe, in advanced now? Yes. that the first time he won an advanced contest? Yeah. He's got to buy lunch if it's his first time. Yeah. Well, tell him it's his first time anyway. He probably won't remember. <laughs> <laughs> he has no memory left. <laughs> you know, you marry a gal that's 35 years younger than you, you deserve to go brain dead. Joe, we want lunch. And we're not having burgers either, Joe. <laughs> Here, yeah, and we'll go check her out. <laughs> now this is a dangerous situation. The Tavio Suarez and myself, none of us have our women here, so we are on wild, we're all in wild mode. Ah, I'm going to show Judy this video, John. I saw that. Suarez wants to hit the nude bars. Oh my God, no respect. He's not going to win that lottery either. Don't even think about it. Who's flying now, Bill? This is the last flight of the day. Now we can get our go for our lunch. The Philly Flyers. The Philly Flyers. The city of brotherly love. We had the most spectacular crash of the day, anyway. Well, you got you could outdo yourself here, I think. I think you're right. I think your car just blew over. Yeah, well, I'm not doing the whole pattern. Yeah, here you go. Philly Flyers. Number one, where it counts. In the lottery box. <laughs> okay, Rick, you're on. Hey, give, me, give us whenever you're ready. What's this guy's name? Rick Higaby? No, or Hick? Uh, Tom Walker. Tom Walker. Are you Paul Walker's brother or what? You're a lot cuter than he is. And younger, probably, too. Oh, the bearded wonder is here with his all American. Oh, my God. The infamous Sabre stunt. The launch air brigade. Everybody holding down their planes. Come on, baby. Start this motor. We need some entertainment. Yeah, you know, but there is a serious point to all this, and I guess if you get that off of one of these videos, it is, uh, I guess the most important thing we all have here on the East Coast is the camaraderie of friends. People that you genuinely care about, love, respect, whatever, even though we kid each other, we really do love each other, believe me, we do. That's why I sign all my letters, love Wendy, we really do love these people. Even the ones we don't love, we love. That's the way we are. Like Buddhist monks or something here, I don't know. But we did have a good time today, and it was good getting away from the sheetrock for a while. Getting out in the fresh air, in God's clean air. Smelling some balsa would burn. Get some hot stuff on your toes. Consecutive maneuvers. In fact, I'm standing right in a good trajectory if this wing falls. I'll have a voice change.
is, as much as I kid about it, there really is a significant thing to learn from these videos. This one in particular. Just how much fun we do have. For sure, none of us getting rich. Maybe Randy Smith is getting rich. Who knows? Oh! But we sure are having fun, and this sure beats the hell out of staying home and trimming the hedges or, you know, whatever it is you have to do when you're down by your house alone. And all your friends are out flying and you're home washing windows and your wife's hollering at you. And you find out all your kids are on drugs and having problems. It's good just to get out to the field, have a good time, be with the people you love, even if they think you're an idiot. And that's the, I guess, the special thing about stunt is that there's just so many things to learn. There's just so many things, so many friendships to have, so many places to go, so many contests, so many different variables. And today we really did find some variables that worked on that purple guy under these conditions. And we'll go back if we have good air next week. We're going to hit flushing next week. Hey! This, by the way, is one of the guy's first contests, so we're cheering him on. And by flying in these conditions, you always pick up trim, trim techniques, the short lines, the extra tip weight, a little bit bigger handle. You always find things that'll work for you. And then many Walker fly-offs have been flown in this kind of conditions. 84, for instance. 87, even worse. 91, all conditions where everybody's flying deteriorated because the wind was coming up. And obviously it's nice to know that uh, at least you have a fighting chance, you know what direction to go with your trim to get something accomplished here. Jack Sheeks uh, has just been demoted here. That's Bill Suarez it. is telling That's the secrets it. of the life of we Jack Sheeks. We have the absolute oh, secrets man. of Jack Sheeks. We know how he built all those planes. He only made one he plane. Did. It was only one plane. He takes the covering off. He's got a hinge at the leading edge and trailing edge. Sweeps right. the wing back. Right. Recovers it. That's it. New paint. And he names it something That's else. It. The Sheiks. The Sheiks special. The Sheiks. Sheiks so matic. The Sheik. Mr. Sheik. Sheik of Arab. Sheik Junior. <laughs> Cut off two inches. The Sheik Junior. <laughs> God bless you, Jack. Uh, Jack, you're okay. I don't care what Suarez says about you. Hey, Rabbit, you ready to buy us a little lunch? There's a place that sells Philly Mignon down the street here. You better go one of 30 of them if you want to get that plane back to New York. No, he flew in by Learjet. I have to carry his plane like I'm a slave. Whoa, there goes the chair. All right. More tip weight on the car. More tip weight on the van. The van's falling over. Put a tab on it. There goes the garbage cans over. Will you fly in here? Put me down. I got a 
Now here's a unique thing, you get to seed your lawn and go flying at the same time. <laughs> what is this, the Scott all-purpose? The, the Scott lawn feeder and combination toolbox. And, and plumbing supply, look at this, it's great. This, this is for sale by uh, the homeless people in New Look, here goes the chair. The chair even goes on. The chair goes on. That's great. Hey, there goes the chair. Oh, hold on. There goes the table again. That's good, Dan. I like that lawn feeder attachment. That's great. Yeah, Augie Buffalo. Yeah, He's got a wheelbarrow. Oh, man. I'll tell you, brain damage. See, that's what you get for not using Pro Stunt product line reels. Look at these chintzy things. What are these chintzy semi imitation things here? Here you go. 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 Here you started walking uh, at 70 at 60 years of age and they said that's great how's she doing he says i don't know where the hell she is <laughs> oh man i got it rich how'd you make out today you learn anything yeah yep stay home on days like watch this right the weather stay home watch the weather report before you get up early in the morning to get here <laughs> No, it's good. I never flown a wind like that. Future no, Intercontinental Champion, Rich Peabody. Did we good? <laughs> Make you some money. Electric line reels. Yeah, we're going to build a beginner's hand. Wow, that's already done. We'll be right there. Now the final event of the day is going to be the Windy and Billy fly off with a combat job. Bill Suarez has challenged me, challenged my integrity and my manhood with this uh, this 25 year old voodoo here. And Bill's going to get to fly it first, and I'm going to get to fly it second. And if he doesn't crash it, he isn't known for reliable flights. Okay. And this will be for money. This will be a money meet, ladies and gentlemen. I see money change in hand. What is this, vacuum cleaner parts or money? <laughs> what are you guys into, the Hoover machines here or what? All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the world's fastest combat job flown by. What do you think this is, the Reno Air Races? How fast does this thing go? Pretty good? About 100. Oh, 100. I can run faster than that. <laughs> is that up? Yeah. That's up. How much is you going to get? All right. Where's Suarez? Is he warming up, like doing stretch exercises or something? Where's Billy? Come on out there. Come on, Suarez. Take your turn in the barrel here. Well, I'll tell you this. He bought every lottery ticket here. He thinks he's going to win the lottery. Don't even think. Look at this no grinning monkey. Forget it. Forget it. You're no fun to fly with. Carry some sheetrock for us. Look, hands in the pockets. It's got to be a, hey Billy, it's got to be a stunt pattern. No extra laps, no nonsense. And don't sit there adjusting the handle for half an hour either. Oh, look, he's got to adjust the handle. 
Next thing you know, I want to adjust the needle valve. Right. I'd like to adjust your oh man. <laughs> this is for money, ladies and gentlemen. I have two props and I don't want to cut them down. Brian hasn't sent the props yet. I want to take some 12 inch and I just